Okay, the recording is on. Good morning and welcome everyone to BC310, a course on church and ministry administration. Uh, this is our second week in this course and uh, we're going to start getting into more and more details on uh, ministry administration. All right, we may I request somebody to please pray with the class and then we will get started. Who would like to pray this morning? Okay, may I ask uh, maybe Avni, would you like to pray with the class and then we'll start, please? Yeah. Good morning, Pastor. Thank you. Good morning. Let's pray. Father God, we are so thankful to you for a new morning that has come into our lives as your mercies are renewed every morning. Lord, thank you for fresh mercies and this time we commit everything into your hands, thanking you for your blessings, for your provision for your word that we are going to receive, for the knowledge that you want to impart through our pastor. We thank you for your presence amidst us and thank you for everything that you are equipping us with so that we are prepared to spread your kingdom around our Father and do the work that you want us to do our Father. Lead us by the power of your Holy Spirit our Father and continue to hold us and guide us in all the ways. Bless pastor, bless all the students and bless each and every one of us to learn in its fullness and use it for your glory and for your kingdom expansion. We ask this prayer in the precious and matchless name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good morning once again. Welcome, everybody. So we're going to just quickly review uh, what we did last week and, uh, uh, and then move forward from there. So... Uh, I've, uh, as we go along, lecture by lecture, I will keep sharing uh, the PDFs. And usually what I do is I kind of uh, update the content um, as we go along, just based on our interactions and also some developments that happen. So uh, that's why I haven't given you the full notes. Like, so that gives me a little flexibility to keep updating content. Um, I've also shared one... Uh, oh, um, recommended reading book there are many books of course that you could read but mm, this has been a, 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 the, the particular book that i shared the uh, church leaders mba by mark smith and david wright it's a it's a dated book meaning it's it was written in 2012 but uh, it was an interesting way uh, it was put together uh, it's it brings in the thoughts uh, of many leaders on various aspects of uh, church administration. So it, it's a nice compilation of uh, articles. Uh, so you can read it if you are interested, right? Um, uh, I'm not going to, uh, you know, the, the, the exams won't be based on content in that book. It'll be just based on the course that we do cover, that we cover in the course, in the lectures, but um, it's for your own benefit. But a lot of it, you will find that you know there are common ideas that are that are discussed and shared in the lecture. So, so you're welcome to take time to read it if you can. All right. Um, yeah. So let's get started. I'm just going to quickly um, share um, uh, last week's uh, notes, and then we will go forward from there. So last week we um, got started in talking about the importance of good administration. And, um, you know, like we mentioned last week, uh, one of the common struggles people have is coming to terms with the fact that even though we are doing spiritual ministry, uh, whatever, whether it's a local church or any other kind of ministry, which is spiritual and depending on God and depending on the Word of God and depending on the Holy Spirit, though we are doing spiritual ministry, yet we absolutely need good organization and administration. You know, so many, many people find it difficult to bring these two together. You know, for, in their minds, it's like ministry is everything spiritual, uh, just 
you know, <laughs> organization administration is very fleshly and worldly and carnal and human. And so they tend to just leave it out. Um, but uh, uh, hopefully from what we did last week, uh, as we just kind of journeyed through scripture, the Old Testament and also uh, the New Testament, uh, we can see clearly that, uh, you know, uh, 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 ministry truly is spiritual, but God Himself is a God who wants or who who desires good organization administration. That both come from God, right? The spiritual and the practical. God anoints and blesses both, and we will see some more on that today. And then we also talked about, you know, a, a, a practical from a practical perspective, why is uh, administration organization important? Uh, what are some common excuses we, that we might hear from people? And this can come even from pastors and Christian leaders and uh, church people, uh, who, you know, who, who are not very open to uh, organization administration. And so we need to be prepared uh, to give them a sufficient answer. So today, um, hopefully we'll, we'll see how far we go. We can do chapter two and three if, if, if possible. But today, I want us to think about, you know, what are the objectives of good administration in, 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 in a local church or any kind of Christian ministry? You know, whether you're doing a youth ministry or a music ministry or a children ministry, there's so many different kinds of Christian ministries we can be involved in. Uh, all of these ministries, like we said, need the backing of good organization and good administration. But we should be clear in our minds of what is the purpose of this organization and administration? What are the objectives that we are trying to achieve? So we want to kind of do that. We will, of course, start from a spiritual, from a biblical perspective, and then come into the practical side. So when we, uh, when we say administration, or organization, we're talking about this, all the activities that support the spiritual ministry, right? That support and undergird the spiritual ministry. Of course, Christian ministry is a spiritual ministry. We are ministering the word. It may be worship, prayer, caring for people, uh, equipping believers, so many, so many things spiritually. But the objective behind it, uh, the objective of the administration is to really support and undergird it so that the spiritual ministry can happen effectively and meaningfully. And just to reiterate, right, just to reiterate, we covered some of this last week, but just to reiterate that, and I want you to think about this, that as far as the church is concerned, administration, is a spiritual ministry. It is a ministry to the Lord and his people. You see, it's a slight change in our perspective, a change in our thinking, that the person who is doing admin work, administrative work, organization work, many times we don't look at that as spiritual ministry. We think, yeah, he's just doing some, you know, natural work but i want us to change our thinking of it from because it's in the bible and we will look at the same scriptures because it's in the bible that administration doing that kind of organization providing leadership structure vision motivation all those things that go into administrative type of work is a god ordained function it is a God anointed function. And therefore, it is a ministry to God, from God, and for the people. So we've got to look at that and we've got to respect people who are doing administrative work, organization work, with that, with the same kind of respect that we give to, you know, somebody who's a preacher, who's a worship leader, who is doing spiritual ministry. Of course, we respect them. Oh, we say they are anointed, they're gifted, etc. 
But we need to have that same perspective for people who are doing administrative work, organization work. Now, why do we say that? We go back to some of the same scriptures we saw last week, and I will just you know reference them in Romans the twelfth chapter. Okay, maybe let's just read it a second time. Somebody can read that Romans chapter twelve. I'll turn to it in my Bible also. If you have your Bible, uh, you can turn to it as well. Could somebody read it again? I know uh, we read it last week, but uh, it's good for us to just do it again. Romans twelve. Um, Somebody could read verses 6 through 8, please. Romans 12, 6 through 8. Go ahead. Romans 12, 6 through 8. For I say, <coughs> sorry, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he how to think uh verse six uh you can jump to verse six um okay. having the yes. having then the gifts of gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us whether prophecy let us prophesy prof prophesy according to the proportion of faith or the ministry let us wait on our ministering and he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhort exhorteth on exhortation and he that giveth let him do it with simplicity he that ruleth with diligence and he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness let love be without thank you thank you Shrikma. so romans 12 6 8 uh, i want to focus on two words there the word ministry in verse 7. you know who whoever does ministry let him do it you know, let him focus on that. What does the word ministry it simply mean? Service, any kind of serving. You know, it's a word that's connected to what we refer to as de what deacons would do, right? Um, so any kind of serving. You know, so you see, they could be serving administratively, organizationally, anything, any kind of ministry. Again, there's the other word, leading. He who leads. You know, you're standing in front. You're providing leadership and leadership has not only spiritual side to it but it has all the practical administrative organizational side to it so both these in the context of Romans 12 are gifts that have been given to people from God and they are expressions of the grace of God put on people's lives and they are functions that people have in the body so you think about this administration organization or leadership is a gift a grace and a function that god has put in the body and therefore it is a ministry unto the lord it should be you know, it is a spiritual ministry same thing romans 16 verse 1 and 2 we read about phoebe uh if you turn a few pages down to romans 16 um phoebe uh, we read about her last week. Uh, she was a servant. She was a deacon, a minister of the Lord. And she was handling, verse 2 says, Romans 16, 2, uh, she was handling some business-related things. It's most likely some, you know, organizational, administrative type of work. And she is referred to as a servant of the church, a spiritual ministry. First right? uh, Corinthians 12, 28, uh, remember that we saw two keywords there helps and administrations helps and administrations in that first Corinthians 12 28 Paul talks about apostles prophets teachers workers of miracles gifts of healings and in that same verse he goes on to talk about helps administrations diversities of tongues so helps again it's just service anything that you that somebody does to support what's being done or assist what's being done helps administrations and uh, 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 the literal con meaning of that word is a steer uh, steership or a helmsman as they would call it somebody who's in charge of guiding where the ship goes so that's an administrator he is guiding where the ship goes he's a helmsman and um, uh, that 
you know, you could translate into modern context as a government. Somebody said was, was taking care of the governance, leadership, was a guide, was an organizer. So all that comes under that whole administrations. And again, it's all it's put together in the same verse, uh, along with apostles, prophets, and teachers, and so on. And finally, in First Timothy chapter three, verses one to thirteen, as Paul is. Uh, uh, talking to, uh, writing to Timothy about, you know, how to take, organize a local church, he clearly identifies two sets or two categories of ministries, bishops and deacons. Deacons are those who, uh, from the context we see in the book of Acts, are people who are supporting the spiritual ministry in the church. And so, if you look at the requirements for deacons, they're just about the same as those who are, bishops or spiritual ministry the, 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 the requirements are just about the same except that they, you know the, he doesn't tell deacons have to be apt to teach and all that but otherwise what is required of them is the same so here again you see that uh, a spiritual elder and uh, a, a person who's doing practical work in the church both are ordained by God appointed by God and the requirements uh, of their lives are almost the same so we went through these scriptures for one reason to emphasize and to put in our minds that we should not look down on people who are doing administrative organizational type work you know we would say back-end type of work uh, and neither should you uh, because each one of us will be required to do this kind of work especially when you're starting a ministry you know you would probably writing the accounts you would probably be you know doing a lot of documentation or reporting or organizing administering and you'd be wondering hey i'd love to use this time to go and pray or i'd love to use all this time to you know study the bible of course praying is important of course studying the bible is important but now out of necessity if you have to do it you know, don't feel bad. It is something God has put in the church and you're doing it for the glory of God. And until sub such time, somebody else can take up that role. You do it and do it heartily, do it cheerfully as unto the Lord. Okay. So let me just pause you before I go forward uh, to see if there are any thoughts or comments from anybody in the class. Any questions, any thoughts, any comments so far? Everyone's okay. All right. Okay, okay sir. Clear. Oh, look. Okay, fine. Let's go forward. All right. So now we start talking about some all the practical stuff. So administration, you know, people generally look at it and it's nice for us to think about it a little bit. It's an art, it's a science, it's also a spiritual gift, right? It's an art because some people seem to naturally have those traits and characteristics um, and also maybe sometimes because of the way they have been nurtured and taught and trained and so on, they have these uh, uh, skills that are needed uh, to work with people, to be sensitive to people's needs uh, and so on. They have some, that innate sense of responsibility. You know, they feel very responsible for people, for things, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, having things put in place so that comes under this whole category of art you know usually art is something that's innate it comes out of the person and so i'm not saying this cannot be acquired but you find people who just it just comes naturally to them uh, to be very responsible to work with people well to understand people well to be able to organize it seems to come naturally but then Administration is also a science, meaning you can be you can learn it. You know, um, uh, there are 
skills that uh, we can learn. We can learn how to. We can learn how to organize. We can learn how to plan, how to establish process, put up a budget and review performance, evaluate data, uh, how to analyze and make decisions. These are things that can be developed. All of us can learn. You know, so uh, hopefully in the in this course, as we go through this, uh, some of these things will be, uh, uh, you know, we will help, it'll help us develop and understand uh, some of these skills. And of course, as we said, from a spiritual perspective, God anoints, God empowers, he inspires, he gives us idea, he guides us, he gives us wisdom, he uh, gives us solutions to problems we may face as we go along and all of that. So there's the spiritual anointing, the gifting that comes from God. So uh, we need to look at it from all three perspectives that, you know, yeah, there are some things that you may be naturally very good at, wonderful, develop those gifts. Um, make an effort to learn, develop the skills you need. Uh, if things are new and you've never done them before, it's okay. You can always learn how to do it. And at the same time, you look to God and say, God, I know you can anoint me, you can empower me, you can give me ideas, you can give me wisdom. And so we're constantly looking to God in this area of organization and administration. And I can, I can you know, just looking back on my own personal journey, uh, I, I can definitely, you know, say, God, uh, that, that God from time and time again uh, would inspire ideas, would inspire, you know, strategies. Uh, there are times when I needed to know how to handle, you know, a situation in the ministry. He would, when I go pray, he would give wisdom and then I would be able to, you know, carry it out and it would, be a good solution. So it's just, you know, we need to learn to look to God, even as we organize and administer the ministry and the area of work God has given to us. And look to God, pray, and He will definitely inspire, you know, ideas and wisdom and guide us in this whole process. So we're not doing this on our own. Um, just for a little clarity's sake, you know, uh, uh, traditionally, or, or no, I wouldn't say traditionally, but in in general management um, schools or so on, you know, there, there's a distinction between leadership, management, and administration. So leadership typically is involved with vision and strategy, influence, organization, looking at the organization as a whole, Management typically is in the operation, the running of a unit or a small department, or we could say an area of ministry, a specific area of ministry. Administration is kind of getting down to a lower level of you know, the actual scheduling, the executing, the accountability, the teams, the performance, all of those kinds of things. Right? Uh, so we understand the distinction. Uh, and uh, um, and then uh, you know we are aware of it, but in this course, uh, for our purposes, we are just going to you know club them all together. So I'm not going to you know address them in three separate distinct categories. But you know there there are different things we'll talk about. You know, for example, talk about performance reviews. Uh, or we'll talk about you know motivating people, or talk about having a vision strategy. Uh, all of these things, uh, we will just you know we will be interchangeable for the purpose of this course. Uh, but then, in, when your organization becomes very big, and maybe you have you know several people, maybe even hundreds of people, then of course you will you know break it down into these three distinct areas of work. You know you'll have leaders, you will have managers under them uh, who are people or people who are doing more of a management type role and then you will have people who are doing more of an administrative type of role but in this course we'll just kind of be interchangeable we'll keep things a little fluid uh, and not worry too much about the distinctions okay now so let's get in here now we're coming down to the ministry side of it um, what are the objectives from a Christian ministry point of view. Okay. 
why do, or what should a good administration, a good organization actually be doing or accomplishing? And I'd like to capture it in this little graphic here. So what we are trying to do is we're trying to develop or what we must be doing in a good organization, in a good administration. We must be developing people, okay? Because ultimately, it's people who are doing the work, right? So we have to make sure that whatever organization we put together and whatever you know structure we have and all of that, it is building people up. It's you know it's developing people, bringing out their developing their skills and helping them learn, helping them grow, and helping them uh, become better. So you're developing people. And then you're also establishing systems. We will explain, we'll get into the details of this as we go along. Uh, different functioning units, you're establishing systems that comprise this entire organization you're putting in place. And within those systems, there are lots of processes happening every day, right? And so, you want to make these processes very efficient. You want to fine tune the process. And then you also want to allocate resources, which is money, time, people, of course. You have people already there. But we'd say you have to allocate money and make sure that money is being spent properly, not wasted, and so on. So when you have all of this, you're putting all this together. You're developing people, you're putting systems processes and resources together for what purpose to put them together so that there is alignment there is efficiency and there's productivity in the activities of the ministry which are aligned to the goals and the overall vision of the ministry so that's what the whole purpose behind the organization is, the whole purpose behind the administration is. So if you say, you know, why are you thinking of having a good organization? Why are you thinking of having good administration? It's for this purpose, that we have the people, the systems, the processes, the resources all put together and keep them aligned keep them efficient, keep them productive, so that they can serve the overall vision and goals of the ministry. You know, it could the ministry in this could, could be a local church. It could be any other kind of Christian ministry you're doing. But this is the reason behind us wanting to have a good organization and good administration. Okay. So, this is our motivation. And of course, when the vision and the goals of the ministry are served well, then what happens? God is glorified and people are blessed. Lives are blessed. Lives are touched. That's the ultimate outcome of having this good administration and functioning. So we are assuming, of course, that there is a vision for the ministry. So this is very important. We will talk about it in our next chapter. Uh, that the vision of that local church or that Christian ministry is clear. They have a clear overall vision and they have identified goals that they're going to pursue. Uh, and, and of course, these, these things could be refined as time progresses. And in many cases, they will be refined because uh, the world around us is dynamic, it's changing, it's uh, the needs around us are changing. So they, while the vision may remain the same, the goals that they pursue, that, that, that are pursued from time to time could be refined and modified, it's okay. But as those goals are refined and modified, everything else that is backing up the the activities that are that are backing up the pursuit of those goals should also come into alignment and should be fine-tuned to become efficient and productive 
towards achieving those goals. So the organization itself is not static. It's not like, you know, okay, I put everything in place once and it's going to serve well for the rest of time. Not, not necessarily so, because while the vision of the organization may remain constant, uh, the goals, the way that vision is expressed in real life can be dynamic and change. And therefore the organization must adapt, uh, must be fine-tuned, maybe new systems maybe need to be put in place so that everything stays aligned, there is efficiency and productivity towards those goals. Let me just maybe cover a little bit more and then pause for some questions. So, when we're talking about organization administration, there are three broad categories of skills that we need. And that doesn't mean the pastor has to have all this, obviously not, but it means that we need to assemble the right kind of people to make sure this happens. So we need people skills. Right? We need uh, to develop and nurture and motivate and care for people so that they are able to give their best day to day. You know, Christian ministry can be one of those ministries, sadly, where the highest burnout rate happens. Because in Christian ministry, what happens is people tend to just give sacrificially. I mean, give of themselves, their time, their energy. They just sacrifice. They don't think about taking care of themselves. They don't pause to think about it. They say, I'm doing this for God. I'm doing this for people. It's true. But then they don't. And, and and we need to we will talk about this later that we need to care for the people because as people we need to be renewed ourselves otherwise we will drain ourselves off of the emotional spiritual and physical energies that we need and so sadly uh, both people who are serving God and the leaders who are leading the people they only think in terms of sacrifice sacrifice give you know just just give just give and you're doing this for God you know go the extra mile sacrifice and we keep on giving and we don't pause to think that hey I need to be renewed I need to be refreshed uh, I need to be developed now, I need to be cared for. I need to learn some new skills, whatever, you know. We don't pause to think about that. And so what happens? There's a high rate of burnout, and, and this especially happens in Christian ministry. Either they burn out or they, the life is just cut short sooner than it should be uh, because of uh, overwork and so on. So part of the organization administration is you know we, we should be careful with people who are working in the organization we need to take good care of them the second part is um, having to do with organizational skills or conceptual that is you need to be able to envision you know what is the right system what is the right process that I need to have in my organization to get this thing done you know so example Sunday morning, you're having a service. Every Sunday, almost every Sunday, new people come to church. They, they come and visit the Sunday service. Now, I'm talking about a local church now as an example. Okay, new people come. Now, what are you going to do with them? How are you going to follow up with them? How are you going to invite them back? How are you going to you know, just find out who they are? and see if they are interested in exploring more about the local church you know so you got to think okay what can i do well first of all you need to identify who are the new people any sunday morning uh, what how will you identify them right then you need to be able to connect with them so uh, what are ways that you can connect with them when there are new people come to your the sunday service so if you think you an example you have a church of 
uh, two, three hundred people sitting there, or maybe more. And if even if ten new people come in, how are you going to spot those new people? How are you going to connect with them? Uh, how are you going to make them feel welcome? And how are you going to give them an opportunity to connect with at least one person in the congregation? Uh, how are you going to be able to follow up with them and see if they're interested in coming back or see if they have a need that the church could be of some help to, right? And how are you going to follow up with that? So somebody has to think through on this conceptually. That means first they've got to think through, okay, you know, this is the place where I'm, we are working with, these are the kind of people, so this is what they'll be comfortable with. And then they need to put in uh, some sort of a system and a process uh, to address this, this area of welcoming new people and following up with them, connecting them, you know. So it starts off with a very conceptual, like, you know, how are we going to conceptualize a solution for this? How are you going to put it in place and then follow up and make sure that it's working fine? And then they refine it, change it. You know, if it's not working, always find out why it's not working and refine it. Okay, so you continuously review and improve this. So I'm just giving one example, but like this, in a ch local church or in a, any kind of ministry, there are lots of areas that we need to look at and come up with a solution, put something in place to address that particular need that needs to be addressed. Then lastly, in terms of uh, organization, we need execution skills, which is a technical skill. That means you need to put the right people to do this. Uh, you know, this has to be the allocation of time and money. Uh, and then you need to analyze whether it's actually happening. Uh, in many cases, you can look at numbers and then you think about how you can improve the outcome. So this is a little bit of technical skill. And uh, uh, in allocating things, you know, you may use technology, you may use, you know, different kinds of solutions to address the need and so on. So you need the right kind of people with the right kind of skills. So in administration, you're, you know, you're, you're, do, you're doing all of this, not necessarily you, but you're bringing people together who can address these various are various areas of skills that are needed to make the administration organization become very good okay let me pause here and see if everybody's uh, with uh, are we all together any questions so far any thoughts any questions hello pastor this is charles Hey Charles, how are you doing? Doing well. Um, at the stage we are in, it is uh, the stage of listening and paying attention and trying to process these things and seeing them, trying to look forward to see how these things can be applied. So we might have fewer questions. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, understand that. Levy, please. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, it's, I've been laughing here because it's, it's kind of different. It feels different because um, I worked in somewhere for about nine years as administrator. And the times when there were consistent burnouts, um, but you were in between the continuity of the work and your context of being loyal and faithful to the work. Um, in the context of, um, because it's a spiritual work, it's always had this connotation of God does not take a rest, or God does not go on breaks. You know, and you felt that you were burning out, and you needed to um, refresh. But it always seemed that that gap that you live in those moments are uh, very crucial to the organization. So. Um, it's always like, well, let's say the, it's a tough place for most um, pastors where their, their staffs have to find a way to live life and at the same time work the work that they're supposed to work. So is it, is it a thing of, um, how do I 
I'm, I'm saying something, I'm also trying to ask a question from a pastoral um, perspective. How do you balance those, those kind of moments? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good, very good. So here's what you know we do um, at APC. So what we tell all our staff, including myself, starting from me, all of us, we have to work 40 hours a week minimum. And you don't expect it to work more than that. I mean, if you work more, uh, I'll talk about working more than that. So everybody's expected to work minimum 40 hours a week. That means every seven days you work 40 hours. How you do the 40 hours is up to you, right? And now for those of us who are pastors, uh, Sundays would be a work day because we may do two services, sometimes more. Then Saturdays will be a full day. We may have weekend schools, um, other things happening. So our day off, you know, would be a Monday or some other day of the week. So we basically, we say all our stuff, each person works 40 hours. You take whatever day you want off during the week. Just keep your team and keep others informed so they know, you know, how to coordinate with you. So that way, if, and secondly, uh, if you work more than 40 hours any week, so example, in, in blocks of four, because half, four is half a day of work. So if you work more than 40 hours a week, any, any week, you are requested to take the extra hours off immediately the next week or as soon as you want. So it is accumulated towards you. Okay, so, example, if I work 48 hours this week, because, you know, out of necessity, me, I, I needed to work more. An example, I work 48 hours. Then that eight hours extra is credited to my account, to my, it's, it's all tracked in our system. It's credited there. And I can take that eight hours off from work anytime. So I could take a day off from work the next week. Uh, we call it compensatory off because you've taken, you've worked more last week. You can take it off, right? And in addition to that, uh, every staff is given, uh, you know, these public holidays and they're given, uh, uh, I, I, you know, my numbers may be a little off now, but uh, I think uh, um, five or six days of sick leave, um, 15 days of vacation leave. And if you work beyond two years, then you're given 20 days of vacation leave. So every staff is given that, right? And now it's up to up to this. So basically we are encouraging them. We encourage them every calendar year, take these days off, right? So basically what we have already put in place is uh, a system where people are encouraged to rest, right? So you're working, you're doing Christian ministry, but you are important. Um, uh, you're only expected to work 40 hours a week. If you'd work more than that, take the time to rest. So, you know, we are, thing. and sometimes I tell my staff, I tell people, if I see them working to myself, hey, take a break, go. You know, sometimes I force them to take a break. And it's what Jesus did, you know, in Mark chapter 6, when he saw his disciples um, uh, working a lot. You know, in Mark 6, and I'm just looking at verses, uh, th verse 31. You know, he told his disciples, come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. So he saw that his disciples were very busy. He told them to rest. Even the Lord Jesus did that for his own team, right? So I think if he put these things in place, then people understand that they are important. And then we give a lot of other things, benefits, like for every staff, we give them 10,000 rupees uh, to spend on their own education every year. So uh, they can do any course, of course, related to work, um, uh, any courses related to their work, uh, uh, and we, they, will they can get reimbursed 10,000 rupees every year. Uh, they can attend any Bible college course for free. So every 
every semester they can take up to two courses for free and that will be considered as part of their work hours. Any staff can attend any week in school uh, and that will also be considered as part of their work hours. Uh, so it's all part of what we're saying is, look, your development is also important. Spiritual and practical development is important. So it becomes part of that. Then every month, uh, we have a staff meeting where we do a little bit of training. So one hour of training every month, all the staff attend. And it, training could be on some practical things, communication, planning, strategizing, execution, all these different different practical topics. Everybody attend, all the staff. So. Uh, this is kind of telling them that, look, you as a person are important. You growing and developing yourself is important. So, so I think if we, in the organization, uh, if we build it into how we want to run the organization, then they will all automatically, people understand the importance of, you know, renewing themselves, whether physically, practically or developing themselves you know by learning new skills and so on and they will realize that it's not just about sacrifice and work and work and work all the time but they need to be taking care of themselves so we'll get into all these details uh, as we go forward uh, uh, sorry for the long answer to your question but i hope it no, helps yes sir. it just i think what you're trying to say if i understand is that it goes down to policy and systems and the administrative structures that's put in place for both staff and the ministry. So. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, we have time for one more question before the break. Uh, Shri Kumar, I see your hand raised. Please go ahead. Thank you, Pastor. I just want a clarification on one thing. Um, like as you, uh, as many, uh, especially, I don't know about other, other, other country, but especially India, uh, we don't take this management thing as a spiritual like you know as you uh, in the beginning as we we were discussing so in that case when you are ministering in a church and uh, you are uh, you are uh, serving in a church and uh, your pastor um uh, does not give much value uh, to these things and uh, when you know the truth so in that case, uh, how we will implement these things? Uh, because the pastor is not at all, pastor is more focusing on the spiritual thing, not on, on this area. So in that case, um, you know, how we will we can able to handle the things or how we can survive there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Interesting question. Mm. How, what would you do in a situation like that? I will share my thoughts, and maybe others on the on the on in the class may have other ideas. I mean, if possible, you know, I'm not saying this will always work, but if possible, it's nice to have a conversation with the pastor and in one area. So you can always, you know, use one example. So in one area where there is a need in in that church or ministry in that one area you can say pastor why you know why don't see you know the goal is to help the pastor see the value of organization and good administration right so if you, if 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 you see and, and and to help him to understand that this is of god it's not against god it's not against the work of the spirit but it is from the holy spirit so of course we can show him you know share if if it's possible share from the word and then give an example uh, 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 like a demo you know in one area sebastian in this one area let let us organize let us plan let us do it well you know uh, assign one or two people see how it goes and if he sees how sees the result you know of good organization in one area of ministry then he's likely to buy into that idea, right? And he sees that, look, there is prayer happening, of course, we are praying, we are doing spiritual ministry, but it's being backed up by good administration, good organization. And if he can see it, then he's most likely to say, yeah, if it works in one area, then it can work in all the other areas. 
So that is one thing that I would try, if possible, right? As a way to introduce it. Now, I'll just open it up to others in the class. They may have other ideas. Um, so if anybody would like to respond to Sri Kumar's question with some other ideas, please do so, Christopher. Uh, no, mine is actually another girl. Oh, another question. OK, so let, we, we will pick it up right after this. Anybody has any other ideas for Sri Kumar? His question is, if the pastor is only focused on spiritual ministry, is not open, you know, not interested in administration organization, how can you introduce it to the pastor so that he will, you know, do it in the church or the ministry? Any other ideas? Go ahead, Roshan. Yeah, Roshan, go ahead. I feel what, as you said, pastor, I mean, showing to the pastors from the scriptures, from the word of God, how administration is actually uh, stewardship. Mm. Proper stewardship, not just about uh, the revelations that God gives us, but also, you know, how to handle things in the mm. area of church. I believe it's, uh, I mean, it will be so nice to, open up those things that in the scripture show them of examples of Bezalel and Holayab, how God gave them wisdom and knowledge and understanding mm. to build what God had given to Moses. So mm. basically the, the pastor has to, I feel, has to come to that understanding through the scriptures. I think that will be, that will be the key thing that will just open up the pastor. Mm. And uh, okay, then the other, okay. like, you know, just so the other things just comes in good 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 thank you for sharing Charles do you have some thoughts for in response to Sri Kumar's question yes um, I am looking at uh, when our brother was sharing the one who has been sharing and I was looking at uh, the scholarly work also needs to be involved Yes, Jesus is God, so he would do things because he is God. He has all the scholarly work it requires. But you look at other people, so you would talk to the pastor, and you look at a person like Paul. He used his scholarly work to do the spiritual part. So it, there are other people like Peter who didn't study and did the spiritual work. But there are others that have done the scholarly work. In the current dispensation, uh, the spiritual might not work as a single unit. So the pastor would be helped to, to understand that the part of <clears throat> the administration thing will involve also some other things of studying, deep studying, deep working together in partnership with the Holy Spirit, but also the scholarly work is also needed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So what Charles is saying is that given the times in which we are living in, yeah, we need to, you know, the pastor should understand that we need to bring both in together the spiritual and the scholarly aspect of things okay good last um, Kennedy did you have your hand raised or yeah I go ahead my contribution am I audible <clears throat> am I audible yes you are audible Kennedy yeah I think uh, my contribution would be to what uh, Sheikh Kumar's idea is that you take advantage of the small groups we have mm. small groups in the church, then you should try and benchmark on things where people are agreeable. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So perhaps, you know, I have um, the smaller groups uh, try and share ideas and, uh, you know, see what's happening uh, and that they could present it to the pastor. Okay, uh, we'll we'll pause here. Uh, I see um, I see comments there from Tarun, which says, "Give him a relevant book to read," which I think is a good thing to do. You know, sometimes 
that's a that's a nice way, a very gentle way of introducing, uh, you know, uh, him to the importance of church administration. A book that combines scripture with these practical things about administration. Yeah, Roshan says, "Tell him to join this course." <laughs> And that's 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 an option. I don't know he'll do it, but anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for a break. Thank you all for sharing your thoughts. It's nice to you know hear from everybody and uh, and, and learn from each other. We'll go for a break. We'll come back. I know we had to take Christopher's question, and there's also uh, uh, who's Kennedy says about talk about privacy. So we will see what that's about. All right. So we have two questions which we will pick up. Uh, right after the break. So we'll be back in 10 minutes. See you soon. Thank you. <laughs> 